um, and sorry, welcome to our this year's edition of our talk show. Please sit, sit back, relax, and I pray the Lord will speak to each and every one of us in this hall this morning. Um, with me here are two very reputable people. To my left, I have the amiable and intelligent Ms. Dose So, A round of applause for her, please. Thank you for making our time to be here this morning. And to my right, I have the humble and God-fearing Master Uhemba Yolamen. A round of applause for him, please. Thank you so much for making our time this morning. And so today we'll be discussing a very disturbing and rampant topic, one that is affecting youth and teenagers so much. We'll be discussing pornography and its dangers. And so, Ms. Jose Naswem, to begin with, how would you define pornography? Okay, thank you very much for that question. Now, pornography addiction, before I go into it, is just one of the main things that is making it such a danger is that many people don't know about it. It's something that many people have not been educated on. So I would like to define it in my opinion as an emotional dependence on the watching of movies, videos, even some kind of books or some songs we listen to. Any kind of media at all that can sexually arouse a person and it leads to a kind of addiction. Now, one, one, some of the dangers of it is that uh, it makes it makes people dissatisfied with their current sex lives. That's married people, and it also causes youth to engage in several risky behaviors such as masturbation and psychological problems. They start engaging in risky activities at home, in school, even in church. In fact, everywhere. Pornography addiction is everywhere. Thank you so much for that definition. You really hit the mark. Um, so over to you, Master Uhemba. Which age group or which set of people are mostly involved in pornographic addiction? Okay, firstly, I would like to thank you, our host, for in inviting me to the show this morning. And firstly, I would like to begin that, back to your question, what age group are involved in pornography? Um, Research has shown that seven out of 10 men are involved in one form of pornography or the other, and six out of 10 women are engaged in one form of pornography or the other. It's quite amazing. And now, to the point of your question, children as young as six to 10 years are engaged in one form of pornography or the other, and teenagers, both male and females, are also en engaged. And it will surprise you that 79% of accidental exposures to internet porn, that is things like pop-ups on the screen of phones, we all know it, right? Pop-ups on the screen of phones. They, among, among kids, it occurs usually at home, accidental exposures to internet porn. And I would like to encourage parents that the Bible says we should watch and pray. And though we are praying for our children, we should not underestimate what the enemy can do. And we should be careful to watch them. Because youths can say they are in the room, your children are in the room for um, the whole day. And you don't care to know what they are doing in there. And some could even tell you, they are so serious, they are doing their assignments, they are reading the whole day, and you don't care to check what they are doing there. So, parents, please, let's take note. And we also need to know that 93% of boys are engaged, and 62% of girls are engaged in one form of pornography or the other before the age of 18. And it will surprise you that the most popular day for watching porn, you will not be able to guess, but it's Sunday, today. And 
we also encourage ourselves that we should be active on one-on-one -on -one evangelism, even on Sundays as we walk or drive home after church. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that answer. It's, that's big news, very intriguing news. Sunday that we are in church, doing religious activities, is the world's most famous day for, for watching porn. Thank you so much. And, okay. Mr. Justin Asim, we have all heard from what Master Wuhemba has said. And you can, you pick out that teenagers and youth practice pornography so much. So what do you think causes this practice? What causes pornographic addiction? Thank you for that question because you know that if we don't know the causes, there's no way we'll work out the solution. One of the causes for me, one of the main causes, I'll say is boredom and idleness. Yes. The Bible says the enemy walks around looking for who to devour. And when he finds the idle mind of these young people, he, he immediately latches on to devour them. Now we are on our long holidays. And usually, children just stay at home, stay in their rooms, watch television. And you know how our television is nowadays. So it's nothing to talk about or they handle a phone all day, and they are not engaged in some sort of skill or the other. That's just like setting themselves up for the devil to, to hold on to that opportunity and drag them in. So I'll say idleness and boredom is one of the main causes. Another cause is this curiosity. Teenagers and youths, we are curious people. We like to know what's going on. We like to know more about what we have heard. And usually, that's what puts people to danger. What they hear from their friends, what they see somewhere, they want to know more about it. And perhaps that's what leads them to that internet site, to know just what people have been saying, whether it's true, whether it's really like this. So. There's a proverb that says, or there's a saying that says, curiosity killed the cat. And I'm sure that the person that made up that saying must have known what they were saying. It's not everything that we want to know that we must know because there's usually a price we have to pay for that knowledge. Another cause I would say is lack of supervision and attention by parents. What Uemba has spoken about, giving many parents now, they give their children devices, laptops, iPads for the holidays. Let them just keep themselves busy, maybe to communicate with us, maybe for their assignments. Yes, all of those things are very good. But as he said, monitoring and guidance is very important as well. Now, the last, the last cause I want to say is ignorance. When you talk with people who have suffered from pornography addiction, you discover that one of the main things that they tell you is, I didn't know. If I had known that this was, this was what was going to happen to me, if I went into pornography, I would never have done it. So we, the church, we know and it's very important that we let other people know as well. Try to talk to young people as well so that they will not fall into this. Thank you. I think that's where I'll stop. Thank you so much for that contribution. And you earlier spoke of boredom and idleness. And I just want to highlight that in the Bible, when kings were going to war and King David stayed back, he did not go to war. If you notice, he was walking on the rooftop of his palace and he looked down, that's where he saw Bathsheba. When you don't, and that's, he, oh, I, I can say he was browsing the kingdom website, that's where he saw Bathsheba's page and he clicked on it. So as parents, you don't involve your children in anything, your children are at home for this long break. The full month of August, your children are at home. They, they stay home, wake up, television, phone, eat, sleep, play, go to bed at night. It's not correct. Get your children involved. Let them do a skill or something like that. Thank you so much once again for that contribution. Um, please, um, we'd like to hear from our correspondent in the audience. Over to you, Awesi. Thank you so much, Zoe. 
Good morning, Ma. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. I'm here with Mrs. Comfort Akungu, the head of the Children and Teenagers Department. Okay. Ma, from what they have said, it's obvious that pornography is a big, um, it has big ne um, negative effects to our young people. What do you think is a way forward, and is there any advice for the young people? Okay. Thank you very much for that question. First, I must say that uh, pornography it devalues and it debases the viewer. There's no two way about it. And it is something that we must watch out for as parents and also as young persons. Uh, you talked, you asked about the way forward. I think number one, we must be like Job. Job said something in uh, the book of Job chapter 31 verse one. He said, I have made a covenant with my eyes that I will not look at a woman lustfully. As a young person, you must make up your mind now that I must not be involved in any form of pornography, whether watching it online or even dressing. You know, I have also seen that we have physical pornography issues with our young people. They dress anyhow, and you, become, you constitute a problem, not just to yourself, even to the people around you. So these are things we must really, really watch out for. And I know that young people surf the internet a lot. And as you do that, one of the ways of escaping pornography, run away from pop-up sites. Anytime you are on the internet and you see anything that is suggestive, that is close to pornography, run away from it, exit such sites. And also we must be prayerful. The Bible says we should watch and pray. The enemy is going around. He's looking for who to devour. And you are a potential victim if you don't watch your life. So we must also watch and pray. And aside from that, I also want to appeal to parents. We must monitor and know what our children are looking at on phones, on our devices, and all of that. Don't just leave them with these things. And assume in your heart that ah, they are doing what they have told you they are doing. Always ensure that you monitor to see what they are doing. And also minimize their usage of phones and devices at this age. There's no need they can do without them. So we should also do that. I think above all, we should also learn to talk to matured Christians. If we are challenged as young people, you can look for somebody in the church, in your neighborhood, even your parents, that you can confide in and talk with them so that you don't get caught up in the web of pornography. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sir, please, what do you think uh, what do you think is the negative effect of social media to young people? Excuse me, sir. I'm talking to you. Ah! You're even watching pornography. Hmm. What is wrong with you? I will wear you 500. From this, we can see that pornography is really affecting the young people. Over to you, Zoe. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Awesi. That was, that was wow. Wow. That's very intriguing. Thank you. Thank you so much once again. And finally, Master Uhemba. Okay, we have seen, we have talked about pornography as a whole. We have spoken about the causes. We have spoken about the dangers. What do you think is the way forward for people bound by pornography? Or do you, do you feel that once in, never out? Okay, once in, never out is the greatest deception of the devil. That's what I would like to say firstly. And the way forward is in two dimensions. It's both physically and spiritually. But everything that you do physically, if you don't add the spiritual, you just end up you just end up not getting it. You just end up maybe it will just lie dormant for a while and come back later. So the spiritual is also important. But I would like to take the physical. So firstly, I will say break up your addiction by reporting yourself to the right person. Right person. I will still stress that point, the right person. There are many matured believers around that we as teenagers, 
could go to and report ourselves, not as our friends that could also be engaged in the same thing and maybe would only encourage us. So reporting yourself to the right person. We all know that a big wound that is hidden only gets worse and it could lead to amputation. But I pray that we will not be amputated from God's kingdom agenda in Jesus' name. So James 5 verse 16 says quickly that confess your sin one to another and you will be restored. So confession, I mean, restoration comes when you confess your sins. And to this end, as Elia said, one-on-one -on -one counseling holds here every Wednesday by, I think, 10 a.m. So we should endeavor to be part of it and come and expose our addiction to the right person. Secondly, we also need to cut off triggers. Jesus said in Matthew 5 verse 29 that if your hand will cause you to sin, then cut it off. Some things are not sin in themselves, but they lead to sin. They, they stimulate sin. So if there's any need for us to cut away from friends, Android phones, or some websites, or some particular Nollywood, or even films, that stimulates our appetite for pornography, we should do. It will help us. We should not deceive ourselves. Sometimes we deceive ourselves that, no, um, um, nothing will happen, nothing will happen. But one thing I want you to know is that the devil was here before you were here, and he's wiser than you. So I don't want you to play with him. And thirdly, I want us to be accountable. We all need to have a discipler I also need to learn that we also need to have disciples, counselor, that we report our progress to as young Christians. Because most of the mistakes that you are about to do as young people, those adults maybe have made them and they have seen it. It's good to learn experience is the best teacher, but it must not be your experience that will teach you. You can learn from your disciples' experience. So we should also learn from that. Lastly, I would like to stand up and show this. The fourth one is the Pavlov's conditioning theory. This is from, should I say, psychological research. The Pavlov's conditioning theory states that any desire or any habit that is associated with pain, the brain is required to resist that particular habit. So it can be practically done with a rubber band. Like you can put a rubber band on your hand and anytime the urge for pornography comes or the urge for sexual um, that sexual or just comes or the sexual thought comes, you can just pull it and release it to cause pain to your body. And if you do this for about 30 days, the pain from this rubber band will be associated with the odds for watching pornography and then the brain will resist that habit. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Master Uhemba. That was very interesting. I'm learning so much from this talk, too. Mr. Dosen Aswem, he clearly stated that the way forward is in two dimensions, a physical dimension and a spiritual dimension. Could you please highlight the spiritual dimension? Okay, thank you. Definitely. Doing all the physical things without the spiritual aspect to just help you for a little while and then it will no longer help you. It it's very important that you also learn the spiritual aspects. Now, in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12 verse 44 b it, said, it tells the story of the man that was possessed by demons, and Jesus delivered him. Jesus gave a warning about the man that, that his heart was cleansed of demons and he left that heart empty and nothing filled it afterwards. The demons, several demons came up later that were worse than the ones before. What am I trying to say here? Basically, you must be born again. You must have Jesus to fill up that space in your heart so that whenever the devil wants to come back to disturb you anymore, he won't find that space inside 
of you. So that's the first most important thing, you must be born again. And moving on after that, after being born again, you have to build yourself up so that you'll be able to withstand him when he comes. And the ways to do that, first of all, read your Bible, not just once a month or once whenever you, think, you remember, but once a, a, or daily, as many times as possible in a day. You should have your personal de devotion now that you follow and a daily plan for maybe a year or two years to follow so that you intentionally build yourself up on the word of God. Also, list, you can read Christian literature and listen to sound doctrine by men of God. All those things help to build you up spiritually, give you a firm foundation and a strong footing in Jesus. You can soak yourself in an atmosphere of worship and when, when you have that atmosphere, when the devil comes, he's trying to bring those feelings, trying to bring those thoughts in. He'll find out that he doesn't even have any space. He cannot penetrate because your heart has been firmly given to the word of God. You must also learn a habit as Christians, a habit of fasting, maybe twice a week or even more as God helps you so that you learn to say no to the desires of the flesh as you are building up your spirit man. Also, the one thing I want to say is that you should not give up. It's not going to be easy every time when you have made this decision and you are trying to follow up on the decision to live a pure life. It's not going to be easy every day. Some days the struggles are going to be very hard, but don't give up. There are people that have come and they have overcome. And God is going to give you the grace to overcome it as well in Jesus' name. Thank you so much once again for that contribution. I'm so grateful. I learned a lot from this talk this morning. And I hope each and every one of us in this room here picked something from this talk show this morning. I want to really appreciate our guests for making time out of their very busy schedules to be here. Please, a round of applause for them, please. Thank you. And I want to appreciate our audience for lending me their ears, even for these few minutes I've taken out of your time. I'm grateful. I want to encourage parents to watch what your children are doing. Guard them. The Bible says we should watch and pray. And as children, youth, and as teenagers, I pray the Lord will help us to fight this raging battle. Once again, I want to appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Thank you so much. I remain your host, Ms. Zoe Akungo. Have a nice day. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Please put your hands together again for...